In this video, I will be talking about experimental design. More specifically, how do we design a scientific experiment that is valid? So when we design an experiment, we need to know exactly what we're testing and exactly what we're measuring. So we're going to go over a few vocabulary terms that will help us build and design very valid and scientific experiments. The first vocabulary term is the independent variable. This is the thing that you are testing. You are in control of it. It is sometimes called the manipulated variable, but I like to think of it as the cause. What do I do to the experiment? What is the thing that I want to find out about? A well-designed experiment should only have one independent variable. The reason is, is because you want to know that that one thing was the cause of whatever happened down the line. If you design an experiment where you are changing multiple things, then you don't know which of those things caused that effect. So it's very important to only have one independent variable. The second term is called the dependent variable. This is what you are going to be measuring. Sometimes it's called the responding variable because it responds to what you have changed. It responds to the independent variable. Usually when you design an experiment, you have one dependent variable in mind but you could also be measuring many other things. So it's important to note that while you have one independent variable, you may have more dependent variables. The last thing that you need to keep in mind is your experimental constants. These are all the factors that remain the same during the experiment. Sometimes they're called the controlled variables, but I like to call them experimental constants because it helps me remember that they are staying the same. Now, in many situations, these can be variables, but you as the experimenter are deciding to keep them the same to make sure your results are valid. Now, if you construct a well thought out hypothesis, it will contain both your independent and dependent variables. If I do this, that's the independent variable, then this will happen. That's the dependent variable. That's what you are measuring. When you record data for your experiment, a good data table usually has both the independent and dependent variables. The independent variable is usually on the left and then the dependent is on the right. When you're analyzing the results of your experiment, if you were to create a graph, usually the independent variable goes on the x-axis and the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. So as you can see, a well-designed experiment includes both of these variables in the steps of the scientific method. So let's try a couple examples. Now these are not gonna be examples that you see just in a science lab. These are going to be scenarios that you may encounter in your everyday lives. Because I want you to see that this process is not something that just occurs in a lab. This is something that occurs every single day and every single time that you make a decision. So. It's summer and very mosquito-y outside and you are purchasing some mosquito repellent. Now you want to determine if mosquito repellent containing DEET is better than mosquito repellent that doesn't contain DEET but instead contains just a mixture of essential oils that were a more natural um, form of mosquito repellent. So this is your test. You want to determine which mosquito repellent works the best. So my hypothesis might be something like, if I use mosquito repellent that contains DEET, then it will reduce the number of mosquito bites that I have. All right, so how would we test that? Our independent variable would be the type of mosquito repellent. This is what we are testing. This is the thing that we are changing in the experiment. This is the independent variable, the manipulated variable. We are manipulating it because we want to know more information about these, the types of mosquito repellents. The dependent variable is going to be the number of mosquito bites that we get. Now, when we're looking at dependent variables, there may be lots of options like which one smells the best or which one doesn't irritate your skin as much. But what we are most interested in is which one reduces the number of mosquito bites that we have. So our dependent variable is going to be the number of mosquito bites. Now, everything else needs to be held constant. So we will call those experimental constants. And it really takes a lot of time to think and account for all of the different variables that you as an experimenter are going to decide to hold constant. For example, how much repellent you use may affect the outcome of the experiment. So you need to keep that 
the same. Maybe you'll do one spray of each or two sprays of each, or you may measure by mass using a certain number of grams of each. It doesn't matter however you design your experiment as long as you keep the amount of repellent the same for every trial of the experiment. The second thing that we want to control is the date and time of the experiment. During the day, there may not be as many mosquitoes, and at night or in the evening, there may be more mosquitoes. So I couldn't test one repellent during the day and one repellent at night, otherwise my experiment would not be valid. So you wanna to try to keep the date and time the same. Another thing that you probably would wanna keep the same is the location of the experiment. If you're next to a body of water, there may be more mosquitoes than if you're away from a body of water or even in your house where there may be no mosquitoes. So you wanna keep the location the same for both of these different mosquito repellents. So we all know these people that just never get mosquito bites. Well, it wouldn't be fair if we used one spray on a person that usually never gets mosquito bites versus another spray on a person that always tends to get mosquito bites. So we will be testing this out on the same person. So my idea with this experiment is that I would take one mosquito repellent and spray it on one arm, and then I would take the other mosquito repellent and spray it on the other arm. That way, it's the same person. It would be the same date and time, the same location, the same part of my body that I'm spraying it on, and I would do my best to make sure that I sprayed the same amount on both arms. And then what I would do is at the end of the night, I would count up the number of mosquito bites on each arm, and I would determine which one produce the least number of mosquito bites. Now, ideally, I would do multiple trials of this experiment, comparing and contrasting my results, because just one trial of an experiment usually doesn't produce the best results. So now I want you to try a problem on your own. I'm purchasing a new potter, I'm a golfer, and I really need to work on my short game. I think that purchasing a new club will help me out a lot, but I'm not sure which one to get. So I test out all three of these uh, different putters and I want to determine which one is the most accurate which one will get my ball closest to the hole if not in the hole which would be ideal so what I want you to do is identify the independent variable the dependent variable and try to list as many constants as possible okay let's go through the answers here the independent variable would be the type of putter that I use a B or C the dependent variable will be how close to the hole did my putt get, or the distance to the hole. All of my constants will include the starting point. I mean, it wouldn't be fair if I used putter A very close to the hole and putter C very far away from the hole. That wouldn't be fair. The whole point of constants is to make your experiment fair. So I want to keep the starting point the same. The date and the time need to be the same. Sometimes in the morning, the greens roll a little differently than in the afternoon. So I wanna keep the date and time the same. Also the weather conditions. What if I test with one putter and then it starts to rain and then I wanna test with my other putter and I have completely different weather conditions. Another constant that I want to keep in mind is the location. Which green am I on? If I putt with putter C on a very tricky green, then putter A will have an advantage. So I want to keep the location the same. Finally, and I think the most important constant is to make sure that the person hitting the ball is the same. If a professional golfer used putter B and I used putter A, we would get very different results in this experiment. So we want to keep the experiment fair and that's the purpose of these constants or controlled variables. Now the last thing that I wanna talk about in this video is different types of observations that we can make when we're performing our experiment. The first one is qualitative observations and the second one is quantitative observations. Now these two words look very similar, but they mean very different things when it comes to what you're recording during an experiment. A qualitative observation deals with descriptions and a quantitative observation deals with numbers. A qualitative observation is not measured. Usually you can get qualitative observations by looking and seeing and smelling and interviewing, um, but you're not really measuring it. Whereas a quantitative observation is something that's measured. Examples of qualitative observations are colors, textures, smells, tastes, uh, and appearance. Examples of quantitative observations are length, height, area, volume, weight, speed, time, temperature, age, cost, 
There are multiple examples of both types of observations. Finally, a qualitative observation deals with the quality of something, a describing word. And a quantitative observation deals with the quantity of something, something that is measured and includes a number and a unit. So when you're performing an experiment, make sure that you understand the difference between both of these. Now, there is not one that is more scientifically accurate than another. Different fields of science tend to use different types of observations more or less than another, but as a whole, both are very, very important. So now you know what goes into creating and designing a very good and very valid scientific experiment.